I know we do have um, the 911 dispatch procedures for towing. We have Lloyd Cox and Walter Hunter that, uh, that signed up in advance. I guess they would actually be on the agenda <coughs> under that. So uh, let me go ahead and recognize you guys at this time. Is Lloyd? Yeah, come on, Lloyd. Question number one, am I gonna be limited to three minutes? You've got five. Five, okay. okay. This is, uh, that was the uh, hearing and uh, the public comment the board has always been uh, five minutes. So. Okay, because my, I've got a written statement here. I figured it would speed it up a little bit. My name is Lloyd Cox. My wife and I own Ambassador Automotive here in Franklin. I'm speaking to you tonight at the request of the group behind me. The group represents the majority of the towing companies here in Franklin. Tonight, we'd like to bring to your attention an ongoing situation regarding how towing companies are dispatched when there is a vehicle accident or incident requiring towing by the Maine County Sheriff's Department. Over the last two years, the majority of us have experienced a huge drop in the amount of tow calls we received from 911 in the town and the county. Over the same period of time, one particular towing company has received a large <coughs> increase in their numbers. We have obtained copies from the Maine County 911 dispatch records for December 4th through 2010 through February 1st, 2012. The printouts show how many calls each towing company has received during this has received during this period. Now, I've got some handout here for you, gentlemen. I'd like for you each to have because it backs up. Uh, statements that I'm making tonight. And there's only one copy of this. Graph, the blue indicates Macon County 911 dispatch calls. Ambassador Automotive received 31. Davis Towing, 21. Drake's Towing, 41. Franklin Body Shop, 48. James Paint and Body, 34. March Recovery and Collision, 25. Nathan's Paint and Body, 76 calls. We also received uh, requested towing dispatch information from North Carolina Highway Patrol to compare the results. The Highway Patrol's reports are from the January uh, 1st, 2011 through January 31st, 2012. The information is graphed in red. <coughs> Ambassador Automotive responded to 37 calls, Davis Towing, 22 calls, Drake's Towing, 34, Franklin Paint and Body, 30, James Paint and Body, 37, March Collision Recovery, 19, Nathan's Paint and Body, 33. Ambassador <coughs> Automotive and James Paint and Body are on both small and heavy duty wrecker rotation where all of the other towing companies have small wreckers only. Also, March recovery and collision and Davis towing were not on rotation for the entire period of time reported. The second graph represents calls by, by agency to each towing company. As you can see, the highway patrol calls per company are very close in numbers as opposed to the calls dispatched through 911. Macon County Sheriff's Department typically does not dispatch a towing company for a wreck. The North Carolina Highway Patrol dispatch records for accidents in the county. The Sheriff's Department does handle tow dispatch calls for traffic stops, abandoned, stolen, disabled, and seized vehicles or equipment. In our opinion, many of these calls are being steered directly to Nathan's Paint and Body. These calls to Nathan's Paint and Body from Macon County 911 only reflect the tow calls that were issued through dispatch. It does not include calls made directly to Nathan's Paint and Body by cell phone or verbal contact at the scene. You may be thinking, what's the big deal about one towing, or about a tow call? The average tow call is about 150 bucks. The initial tow is the only beginning for most, call, most calls. The people behind me own body shops or repair shops. These tows represent the opportunity to repair, disable, or damage vehicles. These tow calls represent thousands of dollars in record fees, storage repairs, revenue obtained when abandoned vehicles are sold or disposed of. Dollars needed for these body shops or repair shops to repair, provide for their families, pay employees, and continue to do business in Franklin and Macon County. We feel Nathan's Paint and Body is getting an increased call for a couple of different, different reasons. Nathan's Her Nathan Hersey, owner of Nathan's Paint and Body, is a volunteer farmer. This places him at the scene of many traffic incidents. Ryan Hersey, Nathan's brother, works for Macon County as an EMT, placing him at the scene of many accidents. Ryan Hersey also drives a tow truck for Nathan's Paint and Body. As you will see from the 911 printouts for 76 calls to Nathan, on some calls, the notes indicate Nathan's paint body was called prior to dispatch even being notified 
or the need for a record. In other words, Nathan's, con Nathan's was contacted directly by the officer at the scene. As best we can determine, 14 calls were issued to Nathan's paint body directly by officer's request. That shows on the papers that I gave you. <coughs> we feel allowing tow company owners, relatives, or employees to work an incident scene allows that one towing company to create friendships that, many, that may steer business in their direction. The people that own towing companies behind me can really accounts where their customers were denied the request for their tow trucks and were told their vehicle was being towed by Nathan's paint and body. I have a notarized statement from one of Ambassador's customers stating they requested Ambassador Automotive to, to, to tow their vehicle and, re, and the vehicle was recovered and the, that request was denied and the vehicle was recovered by no, towed by Nathan's paint and body. We also have listed the incident Accident information on police scan. We all have listened to accident information on police scanners where the words owner's request were never mentioned. No towing company was called, but the vehicle or all the vehicles involved were towed by Nathan's paint body, indicating Nathan's paint body was already at the scene. We have eyewitness accounts on several occasions where Nathan's paint body was at the scene of an accident, no other record company was called, and these vehicles were towed by his company. Also, after reviewing 9-1 records, it seems very unrealistic that a driver from Georgia, South Carolina, Missouri, or even California would make an owner's request for Nathan's paint and body rather than the next rotation. Allowing a tow company or owner, operator, or employee to work the scene of an incident puts that one towing company at an advantage over the other towing companies. It is our opinion, Sheriff Holland endorsing Nathan's paint and body on his Facebook can easily lead to the public as well as the county employees to believe that Nathan's Paint Body is a record company of choice for the Macon County Sheriff's Department. Now, you'll see the picture I supplied you where it was, where it was endorsed. When one towing company is shown preference, it may seem harmless, but it hurts many others. To, re to be replaced, to be placed on the 911 rotation call of towing companies are informed they must be meet North Carolina Highway Patrol criteria. In other words, if you're on rotation with Highway Patrol, you can be placed on the 911 record rotation with the county and the city. Also, if you're removed from the highway patrol rotation, you are removed from 911. The county is, in, in essence, using the highway patrol as a guide. I've got a copy, and I won't read this. It's a directive from the highway patrol saying who can be on rotation, how you can stay on rotation, and you cannot have any financial interest. If you're, if you're a patrolman, brother, sister, uncle, cousin, whatever, <coughs> or work for the patrol to be on rotation. Each of these companies have made changes to remain profitable during these difficult economic times. Expenses have been cut, prices adjusted, new marketing strategies have been applied, employees have been laid off, and equipment has been sold. These are difficult times without the hardship of losing our market share of two customers being influenced to trade with one certain tow company or, other, or authority figures manipulating a situation for a friend in the towing business. We are here tonight to ask for your help in restoring a fair and impartial rotation system to Macon County 911. Pass complaints to Sheriff Holland. By letter and phone calls from several people sitting behind me have produced no change in how the towing companies are called, uh, how towing, how they are called by Macon County 911. Since our meeting with the town alderman last Monday, we are happy to see that Sheriff Holland has been quoted in the Macon County News, assuring everyone that this problem has been addressed. North Carolina Patrol Directive allows for deviation rotations under certain circumstances. That's also in there. I won't get into that because I'm running out of time. As the highway patrol numbers reflect on the second graph that provided, there seems to have been no deviation whatsoever during the last year. It is our opinion that the citizens of Macon County deserve, Macon County should deserve the Macon County Sheriff's Department to be held to the same high standards of impartiality as that of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. On an occasion, snowy conditions, you know, do that, and the Sheriff's Department is working these accidents. A vehicle accident is a very frightening and ex experience, even, even if there are no injuries. The person in the accident is upset, scared. There is not the time for an officer, firefighter, or EMT to take advantage of someone by influencing them to make a decision that profits someone they know. We are here tonight to ask each of you to review the material being provided and take necessary steps to model, adopt, and enforce a county ordinance regarding towing dispatch like the one of the North Carolina Highway Patrol to include the following. Only an officer at the scene communicate with dispatch regarding the vehicle, owner's or operator's request regarding a tow company, either a specific company requested by the company or next rotation. Strict guidelines regarding impartial use of towing services in regard to impounded vehicles. Mandatory use of a form detailing which tow ser towing service was called for each incident and make this form a public record. 
prohibit towing company owners, relatives, and employees from working or volunteering with any emergency service, adopt an ordinance of this nature will restore fairness and impartiality for all. Thank you again, gentlemen, for listening to me. Go on and on and on. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we did give you a little extra time. I, I conferred with our attorney, and since you had actually requested to be on the agenda, we gave you a little extra time. So <coughs> Just stay around, Lord. May yeah, I have a question? Okay. Is Miss Drake here? Did Miss Drake come? No, I'm Drake totally. She had called me earlier today about a letter she only read. Are you going to read that letter? It's submitted. Oh, it is? It is submitted. It is submitted. Maybe it's this package here. Is it in the packet that he gave us? Yes. Okay. One copy. All right. We'll make sure everybody gets a copy of that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Robbie, was there any other? Yeah, Mr. Walker. Hunter's in the back. Okay. Mr. Hunter? Hello, I'm Walter Hunter. I'm here to represent my business tonight. It's Frank from Body Shop. I do not own a scanner and I don't listen to 911 calls. I'm a businessman trying to survive in a tough economy. I have no personal conflicts with any of the other towing services in Macon County. I am here strictly because of the unfairness in the way towing calls have been assigned under the pretense of owner's requests. Customarily, towing companies are called to the accident on a rotation basis. This allows every record owner an opportunity to earn a living. Each company has regular customers who want that towing service, and the owner's request is always accepted of the rotation call. Those having no preference are assigned to that rotation service. North Carolina Highway, Highway Patrol uses the rotation system effectively <coughs> and impartially. The data from this shows each company receives almost equal amounts of calls. The number represents both rotation and owner request calls. The distribution of the calls is not skewed, leading to the conclusion Highway Patrol reports an accident and makes no recommendation nor allows anyone to solicit business for a particular towing. This is not true for the call from Bacon County Dispatch Service. From December 2010 to February 2012, according to the data, Nathan's Bacon Body has received many more calls than its fair share. I can only conclude some outside source is influencing which company is called to an accident. Otherwise, Bacon County data would be real similar to North Carolina Highway Patrol. I'm concerned with the information recorded by the Bacon County Dispatch, and I'm more concerned with a number I suspect have no paper trail to follow because Nathan has been called by cell phones. I believe there are tow calls that are not being recorded because it did not go through the dispatch office. Uh, it is highly probable this has happened many times over the past. <coughs> My company, as well as others, have qualified for the highway patrol rotation list. If there is a problem with any of the towing services that results in reluctance to use that company, those concerns should be addressed with that individual company. <coughs> Perceived problems should not be used as an excuse to give any company an unfair advantage. I realize if any officer at the accident scene makes a suggestion, the accident victim would accept those recommendations. My question is, why would an officer want to recommend one company over mine? I've always thought the law is supposed to protect us, the rights of all the citizens. The Financial ramifications of these actions affect my business more than meaning I lose the charge for towing. My company has the potential to make money from storage and the vehicles as well as making repairs. Each towing call is usually worth approximately $150, up to a maximum of several thousand dollars if repairs are made. The eight people I employ and their families depend on my company getting a fair share. January 2011, I personally brought this problem to the attention of two officials who told me they wouldn't be able to solve it. Their solution was to warn the officers about the practice of recommending a particular service <coughs> and to issue a sign-off sheet to be completed at the scene of accident if there was an owner's request. Those were good ideas, but evidently they were not followed up on. After I reported the problem and assured it was solved, I did not feel it was my position 
to monitor the situation that somebody needs to. I've compiled the data I've received from various sources in the drafts that I'll give you. Please look at this data. I regret this continues to be a problem, but I hope those in charge will follow through with a solution now that the problem has been presented to the board. I'm aware the board has a limited authority over many of the decisions <coughs> that are made, and I'm also aware the board can influence the decisions and does have funding authority which can and encourage that the correct decisions are made. Please think on this issue and help level the playing field for all involved. Please let me know what you decide. I encourage you to look at all this information and the other information handed to you. Thank you. <coughs> let me just say that I was the one that Walter, we tackled this two years ago, correct, Mr. Hunter? Yeah, and, and last year also. And last year also, and uh, we have worked on it and, and we will, uh, what we decided then, as you'll hear the sheriff speak to you shortly, uh, the county has no obligation to do a rotation. But if we're going to do one, we need to do it fairly. We need to do it right. And I think we'll all agree to that, and I think that's what you hear tonight. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Walter Hunter. He's been a long-term businessman in this community. He would not be here tonight unless there was a problem, I'll assure you. You have never saw Walter Hunter to me. <coughs> And uh, if it wasn't affecting his business and, and a truly problem, and I think the sheriff will speak to that too. So, Walter, as a person for me, as a personal friend, I appreciate you being here and bringing this to your attention. I'm sorry it had to come to this again, but it will be monitored more closely. I will take partial responsibility just like anybody else, Walter. And, uh, and because respect to you and the, and, the, and the business of your family that's been in business here for over 70 years in Macon County. Sure. Uh, we appreciate what you've done for this community, and uh, we'll talk about that more here shortly. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Walter. We have uh, next signed up under public comment, William Dewey Gunning. Thank you one more time. Uh, I have the desire to understand what's going on with our uh, uh, guru that's doing the uh, trying to encourage businesses to come in here and uh, I would like to have some way of knowing what's being done I, I, I haven't really gotten any uh, pertinent information on that lately uh, learned a long time ago that if all I do is stand around and be negative, make negative comments, that maybe I am the problem or at least part of the problem. So I support you guys and I support your, uh, you know, every people, everybody's involved, your, your lawyer and your our county manager here. Am I correct in that? And uh, y'all just keep working at it and uh, I'm in your corner. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Do we just clarify? You talking about the EDC, <coughs> economic development coordinator? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. The EPA. Uh, right. We. Yeah. We. We. Uh, when that changed hands, we. Uh, I think these guys will agree with this. We asked that that job is under the EDC. Of course, that's that falls under our responsibility as well. But we asked for a uh, monthly, I believe, Mr. Uh, Get a monthly report, Mr. Uh, <coughs> Mr. We get a monthly report on activities, what's going on, updates, that kind of thing, and, and that certainly would be available, I would think. That would be public, public, public yeah. record. So uh, if you'd like to get a copy of that, if you'll see Mr. Horton, <coughs> uh, be glad to provide you that. We, we did ask for that as board. We wanted a monthly report on activities, even though we put that person on a contract basis, they're not a direct employee. But. Uh, it's not that I have any great answers, but I'd like to know what's going on sure. because we simply got to put people back to work. That's, that was one thing Don't we change discussed. the economy, let's put people back to work. Mr. Weaver, Mr. Manager, is it possible to create a little EDC corner on the web page? <coughs> that monthly well, actually, the uh, Economic Development Commission, uh, through Tommy Jenkins, is creating a new website, updated oh, website. Okay. Goes in, that and that and is that is that we can link to it. We can link to it. It'll actually be a link from 
council website. Could you, you, see. you couldn't hear that. The, the, we're in the process of built, uh, developing a website for EDC. And Mr. Gunn, we couldn't agree with you more. At our board retreat back in January, uh, of course, the planning board discussion got all the, the press, and I understand that. But one of the main things we discussed there was our commitment uh, it, it's about jobs and the economy. And that's got to be something. It, it's hard for a county commission to create jobs when we're so dependent on the federal, uh, what's going on nationally and in our state. But we want to do everything we can do to, to uh, help create jobs here. So we're, we're in the same point. You're right. We're, we're, we're there with you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can we go back to that? Can we finish the discussion on the, on the toy before we get into the rest of the... Well, uh, we're just going through the public comment. Uh, but they were on the agenda. Well, they were under they were under public comment, Mr. Attorney. I don't know what, why that is. Why was that? Uh, we certainly can. Could, could we continue the discussion? I mean, we'll be going, going back to the board to continue the discussion on that. Well, that's fine with me. I was just I would suggest that, Mr. Chairman. There's several yeah. folks who would like to speak to that while while these folks are here. Okay. Don't have a commitment. And, and some of these people, I, I, I made the assumption that the rest of the folks were here that we're going to talk about the uh, the towing. And uh, it's okay, Mr. Gunn, that you didn't talk about that. Let's, uh, I, I will do that. Why don't we uh, move anyone that's wanting to talk about the towing issue? Uh, Austin Brooks, James Birch, Bruce uh, Owen, owner, Sabre Scott, Jimmy Goodman, or Lonnie Cruz. Any you guys here to talk about the towing? No. 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 Oliver. Oliver. Bruce Oliver. Oliver. That's Bruce. Sorry. Were, were you here to talk about the towing, Mr. Oliver? Oh. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Saber Scott. <coughs> I just want to say I think the uh, law that Mr. Cox was talking about, I don't think it's a very good law. There's a lot of people that will lose their jobs as far as Ryan Hersey could lose his job. Sorry, I'm nervous. I don't talk in front of people that much. Okay, we'll go right ahead. Um, it is, this is what the towing companies are complaining about as far as, you know, losing jobs, losing money. Well, if they bring this law in, they're doing the same thing to these other families. There's got to be something else that, that can be done. As far as his reference against Mr. Holland, our sheriff, um, I think he's wrong. I don't think Mr. Holland would ever have his employees call a certain person. Uh, Robbie is very respectful as far as everybody in Macon County goes. He takes a lot of crap from a lot of people. Um, I'm oh, sorry. That's a technical term. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Don't let him. Trust me. We understand that one. We are. Sorry. That just helped you relax a little bit. Go yeah. As, as far as a lot of the other officers go, I know a lot of them. I don't think that they are taken, you know, partial to Mr. Nathan or Nathan. I know Nathan very well. I've known Nathan since he's been very young. I have nothing against the other towing companies but for one person. Um, and um, if I'm in a wreck and someone, and I say the person from, I think he said California, these other places, and I ask the officer, do you have someone that you would trust? If they said Nathan's, then of course I'll go with Nathan. If they were to say this one specific person and I took my vehicle to this person and was messed over or whatever from past that has happened, I'd be very upset with that officer. If I ever seen that officer again, I promise, I would say something to that officer. Now, as far as the rotation goes, I agree with the rotation. The rotation should happen for fairness and all of the, you know, for everybody making money and, and that kind of thing. But if you bring this law in, there's many people that's gonna lose this, their jobs and a lot of good volunteer fire department, a lot of good paramedics. A lot of the towing companies have people that are in volunteer, and I just don't think that that law should be brought in. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Was there anyone else that had attended to speak to this issue that, that was here? If not, I'm going to ask uh, Ronnie, is our 
lays on to the sheriff's department. Uh, well, I'm sure the with, sheriff would like to like to speak to. It. He has several of his officers here tonight, and also I think Todd Siegel is here from 911. We do, Todd. We has. do have Todd, and I think Todd, Todd if you'll come up. Uh, you, Key is here somewhere. EMS director. <coughs> he was here. There he is. So if you gentlemen would address that. To, is Robbie, you would like those gentlemen to address it and then what we've talked about and the intent? Um, it, we I mean, address it together. It, it's your call. Um, I'm, I'd like to speak. Um, I think it'd probably be um, appropriate for me to go ahead and speak now. Okay, that's fine. If don't that's okay with you. Let me just say that what we've talked about. Okay. Sure. Uh, when this was brought back to our attention, I received a call from one tow truck driver last Friday. I think that's right. A week ago Friday, maybe now, I don't know. Uh, saying that the situation had not improved. Uh, I contacted the sheriff right away. He began an investigation into that. I talked to some other tow truck drivers to see if that was the case and that's how they felt. Uh, the ones I talked to, uh, Walter Hunter agreed. Uh, and so the sheriff, as leads on to the sheriff's department, I did talk to the sheriff and uh, he started the investigation of his own. We did have a, we thought we'd had it settled. Uh, we thought everything was fine, but the uh, nice sheriff, I let you pick it up from there. Okay, um, and I apologize <coughs> for any corrections that I'm about to make to you, but actually I initiated uh, my part of the investigation <coughs> before you called me, okay. and then after you called me, the new information came in and we were able to to go in another direction as well. So I just, I had, I had received information based on rumors, okay? And, and so I was looking, at, and a lot of the things that I have to look into are based on rumors. Um, I heard some, some rumbling going on that we weren't following procedure. I'm not like a lot of politicians. I'm not like a lot of administrators. I will not stand up here and tell you tonight, just as I did not last week um, when this subject was brought up, um, with the uh, town of Franklin. I'm not gonna hide the fact that there were some mistakes made. Um, whether that's 100 or 500, does not matter to me. To these guys, the record service, that does matter, okay? But whether it was one or 500 accidents that we, were, we, we, request, we requested a tow truck, doesn't matter. My policy was not followed that I set in place a year ago. Uh, when Walter Hunter had contacted me and last week at the, at the Alderman meeting, I misspoke and I even said that it was a year before that. He corrected me after the meeting and I had time to think about it and I in fact called him that evening to tell him I was wrong. You're right, it was March of last year. Having said that, the professional thing to have done for all these record servers would have been to call. There's many people that are sitting in here today for, for talking about planning. Gosh, and I wish I was talking about planning. Um, but uh, they have called, they have called me with different situations and they have met with me at my office and I have sat down with them and I have talked to them. There's many people in here that have called me at home. I've talked to them about their issues. I have been available to the citizens of Macon County <coughs> since day one and not one time, with the exception of one a couple of years ago, has any of these record service drivers, business owners, whatever, um, have not been in my office to complain. Yes, I've talked on the phone a couple of times to some of them, but not a single one of them has given me the professional courtesy of coming in, sitting down with me. Walter Hunter got up here and spoke. I'm not disagreeing with a word he said. In fact, two hours before I had my um, meeting with my officers to go over the situation again because I found errors that my officers were making. Uh, Mr. Cox, I was not making those errors. My officers were. And tomorrow, I may have an officer make a mistake. Next month, I may have an officer make mistakes. We're not perfect. But we are man enough to stand up last week, as well as this week, to take full responsibility. You took partial responsibility. I appreciate that. When the fact of the matter is, I am 100% responsible for everything that my officers do, whether I like that or not. I take full responsibility. I apologize to Mr. Hunter and any of the other record services that feel like the, that we have purposely 
um, or I have purposely, or anybody in my agency has purposely taken from their business. Mr. Hunter can ask any one of my command staff. He was a direct example because a lot of my command staff have no idea who Walter Hunter is. Walter Hunter has never done anything to my agency or anybody on my department. And I feel for him. And I apologize. And that's why I was man enough last week and I'm man enough tonight to say we've made mistakes. A year ago, I felt I created a new form, just as they were talking about they wish we had done. Or I think it was Mr. Hunter that mentioned that. We did implement a new form. Two hours prior to the meeting that we had with the old men, <coughs> when the same complaints came up, I had another meeting and I've updated that, that, uh, that, that uh, form. And part of that form is now, is that each of my officers, any time that they call the next rotation, which we follow the guidelines, we follow the rotation list of the highway patrol. Whoever is on their list, and I know there's some record services here tonight that are not on that list, we won't be calling you. We call and have been calling the next rotation of the people that are approved by the Highway Patrol. And to be honest with you, the reason we do that is I don't want to have to find, to come to you and ask for more money to hire another position to go around and determine how big their fencing is, how tall it is, what, um, what equipment is carried on that. I'm not in the record business and I don't want to be in the record business. I've eaten record service for the past week. I don't want to be in the record business. I want to do the right thing. So that's why we have been following the procedures of the towing rotation list of the Highway Patrol. I can assure you that while mistakes have been made, I have now made sure that we have implemented a new procedure to make sure that none of these things, and I can't even guarantee it won't happen again, but there's, there's steps that I have taken to make sure that it's, that that hopefully this doesn't happen. But if it does, I will be able to catch it. Catch it. Um, and I had a million things that I'd like to say, but I, keep, I, I can't say them all. Um, uh, <coughs> since our meeting, we've also met with the, the chief. I've met with the chief of police, which he's what you call a lame duck. He's on his way out. So I've already got a scheduled meeting with the new chief next Monday. I've also met with um, Jimmy Teams and uh, Mr. Key and uh, Mr. Siegel, and we're planning on getting together, especially when the new chief comes in and putting all of our heads together to come up with a protocol. Uh, like Ms. Scott said, I don't want to put anything into place that's going to jeopardize the livelihood of any other organization, firemen, first responders. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, don't want to, I don't want to implement a policy that I'm going to have to go back and change. But the procedures that I've placed should be good procedures until the meantime of when we have this meeting. Um, having said that, you all know that it's my responsibility to set policy in my agency. It's solely my responsibility. Yes, you are the, 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 the financial funding to me. I understand that completely. But there's a couple of individuals, a couple of uh, record services that have continued my guys deserve, and by the way, none of my guys have been asked to be here. I didn't ask a single officer to be here. They're here on their own. My guys deserve the respect. They don't need, and of course that respect is also earned, and I understand that. But I don't need, and we don't need, and we need to support our officers, that people can't be out here making up vicious lies that I can prove are lies. I don't need people being out here saying terrible things that my officers are doing and they're continuing to do so since I addressed this meeting last Tuesday or Monday with the alderman. And I'm telling them right here and now publicly, Larry Davis of Davis Towing and Lloyd Cox of Ambassador, I will not tolerate vicious lies about my officers. They will be placed on the rotation list as they are now. We will continue to do business with them. But if they do not stop the vicious things that they're doing and saying about my officers, I can't ask my officers to call them to come and take care of business. I can't. And I will take the necessary steps <coughs> to take them off of our rotation list that just happens to be the same as the Highway Patrol. If somebody gets added to that list tomorrow, they will also be added to our list. And we'll make sure that happens with dispatch um, between now and the time <coughs> that we actually have our meeting to, uh, to discuss protocol and procedures and changes. And I, I don't want to, you know, I'm not power hungry. Everybody that knows me knows that. 
I'm willing to work with these administrators and come up with a good, decent plan. I'm even willing to work with the tow truck drivers. Last Tuesday night, one of the tow truck companies um, outside told me that they would meet me the following morning at 10 o'clock. They never showed. They called and said, and I forget the excuse that they used that they wouldn't be there. Well, then this week I learned that after I left their meeting, Mr. Cox of Ambassador Towing um, informed him, we all got to stick together. Don't go and talk to the sheriff. The professional thing to do would be to come to the sheriff's office, the sheriff's office and sit down and talk with me. I'll be happy to try to address it and fix the problem. Um, as far as the letter that you have in your packet, I hope that when you review that letter, you also contact the highway patrol because it was not to make a call to the sheriff's office. That was not said. It was actually the highway patrol. And there's a whole lot more to that story of why Nathan's towing was utilized. And when enough, and the, and the towing company that the individual, the individual that the, that the person wanted, the trooper, the trooper made the decision not to call that person because he had already had a, and I don't even know if it was Nathan's, I'm assuming it was Nathan's, but he already had Nathan's there hooking the vehicle up and it was 30 minutes afterwards. So that's, that's, there's more to that story. And as far as my Facebook, holy cow. Um, my Facebook, the photo that they're talking about, I took with my photo in my community, in the Colossage community. And um, it, was a, it was a wreck. I'm not gonna say who the wreck was involved, but it was a former um, fellow employee with me, not for my agency, but within the county. It was a horrible wreck. I can't, I can't believe, and everybody that responded to that wreck cannot believe he survived that wreck. I posted it from my phone to let everybody know, because my community, the Highlands Road, everybody in here knows how dangerous the Highlands Road is. And I posted it on my Facebook. There was three photos. I, do you have all three photos? Or you just have one? Just, just, that was the one we saw. All three photos were the photos of the car. The car, the car all mangled in the bushes, the car um, close up, and then a car being put onto onto the record service. Now, as far, I think his complaint is as far as my endorsement that he's talking about is because it has Nathan's paint and body or, or whatever it says on the side. And if you look, there is a driver in the vehicle. As I was snapping the photo, he opened the door to get out, to go back um, to, to take care of however they do their stuff. And it is not an endorsement. Um, I, do, um, I do routinely thank Nathan, um, he's always he's always dependable. He's always there, um, and I appreciate every time that he comes out. To us. I also appreciate Walter Hunter and several of other of these tow trucks. But as Macon County deputies and as sheriff, whether I like uh, Lloyd Cox or my officers like Lloyd Cox, doesn't matter. The policy and the procedures that I have set prior and again, we don't make that decision. He's on the list. He will be called. And it's not fair to anybody to not be called on that list. I think I've, I think I've let um, uh, resolved that with my officers, um, and I, I feel good. I feel good about that meeting, and I've been very, I've had my thumbs on it, and I don't and I don't think I said it, but also on the new form, the the change I made to the form is that supervisors are now required to sign that form. The owner that's being the car is being towed. The officer that's involved and also the supervisor. And then it's also in our procedures that I will then receive. That way I will know that things are being done properly. We're not perfect, but we sure try hard to be perfect because we are sure expected to be perfect. Just to close and share what we've talked about, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, six months down the road that this liaison and the sheriff and and, and some of these tow truck drivers will be getting together to review that policy. We'll review the numbers. The we'll, re we'll review and how the procedures moving along, and I think that's the way we can certainly keep a closer check on it. The sheriff agrees. Absolutely. And we'll uh, we'll be more than happy. We appreciate uh, appreciate the sheriff being cooperative, and of course, these gentlemen over here is what receives our day to day to take care of them. So, thank you. Do anything to add?